Hey, everybody. Welcome to Super Agents Live. Thanks for tuning in today. Uh, real quick, uh, what we're going to do today on the show, uh, we have two things. One, we have uh, Greg McDaniel coming back on, and we're talking about something that is, I believe, very important. You know, w- w- building your list, having a database of customers, of clients, past clients, friends, sphere of influence people is extremely important. Now, Building that database is one thing, and you know how do you build a database? You know you gotta meet people, man. You have to go out and meet people. You have to put yourself in the opportunity to say, "Hey, my name's Toby. I have a show. Uh, this is how it can help you. Get on, give me your card, give me whatever." So w- once you build your database, what do you do with it? Right? You spend all this time. So what we do, uh, uh, Greg and I chat about how to mine your database, how to communicate with your database, uh, uh, what sort of copy should you write uh, to your database, how often you should hit them, um, and we, uh, you know, we give you some tips on, on where you can get more information. And basically, it's, there's lots of uh, great direct response marketers that, uh, that, uh, that I follow. That, that's how I write copy. Anyhow. Um, so that is the first section of this episode today, and I hope you get some value out of it. Uh, and then the last 10 minutes, I talk with uh, Bubba Mills from Corcoran Coaching, and we talk about why live events are important. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm a big live event guy. And by the way, um, we we did one live event here in San Diego, and I gave everybody like two weeks notice. And, and what anyhow, um, hit me up. Let me know if you know. Here's what we did last time. Uh, we got 10 people in a room. OK, and it was like minimal. It was like 150 bucks just so we could pay for the room and, and get some catered food. Uh, but, you know, we get in a room and we, we all master. We all say, hey, you know, what's going on with you? Where are you at? What's working? What's not working? What are you struggling with? And um, and there's lots of ways to do it. But I like to do it as a round robin. You know, everybody everybody pops up and uh, everybody has a chance to, to give feedback if they want. And if they don't, uh, you know, I'm sort of the last guy in the list. And I'll, 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 I'll tell, you know, give you what my thoughts are. So if you want to do one of those and you want to be included, um, I haven't thought about it in a while. But uh, if, you, if, you wanna, if, if you want me to throw that on, let me know. Uh, let's get your name on the list. Now, uh, really quickly, two things. Um, uh, I would suggest if you're new to the show, go to our site, uh, download my ebook, and more importantly for everybody, register for my free membership site. Now I'm going to go to my member right now. Um, so what is happening uh, with the member site? Um, I'll, let me tell you what we're uploaded there. So there's there's free, there's paid, and then the, there's like the, the uh, ultra version is our is our Google community, and that's what you want to be a part of. Um, so, and I think right now you can only get in the silver. I know some of you guys have, have uh, as soon as I talked about this, you registered, but there was nothing there. Here's what I have, again, for free. <clears throat> I've uploaded the definitive guide to Facebook. Now, this is, this is, it's a bunch of links. That's not something, it's not a book that I wrote. It's a bunch of links talking about, um, I'll get into it right here really quickly. Hold on. Um... And it kind of goes through modules the way I did this. Module one, the foundation for success. Um, uh, nine marketing strategies to build super fans. Uh, get, uh, dimension specifics for your branded timeline cover photo. How to successfully rebrand your social media profiles. Nine tips integrating your Facebook page with your Facebook profile. Uh, six daily habits for Facebook marketing success. Uh, five ways businesses are using Facebook timelines. Um, there's social identities. Uh, uh, there's there's a ton of stuff in that. So that is literally that's like one post. But you could uh, go. You could spend a lot of time in that one post. Then I have a goal tracking sheet monthly. It's a spreadsheet. Uh, then I have a mission statement example. You know, if you're building a team or or even if you're not, you should have a mission statement. So I give you an example of how that should be written and what things you can p- put on there. I have a monthly budgeting template. Again, this is a big Excel spreadsheet, an annual budget template, a uh, goal planning spreadsheet, and then a global lead tracker, which that's really cool. That's actually pretty, pretty uh, an intense piece of stuff there. Um, and, and basically on this global lead tracker, it... it that's, again, it's a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet that I'm opening right now. Um, and what we do here, it is, and, the, and you know what? And some of the macros might be uh, deleted, but there's an input sheet, a data sheet, contact statistics, lead source statistics, agent statistics. So in the input sheet, it's like, okay, what lead type is it? Buyer, seller, buy, sell. Uh, site visited, where, where did you collect that? Lead source, one, two, three, and then what agents are assigned to that? So um, as you go through this and then the data sheet, 
whatever. I'm not going to go through this. Go register for at least the silver free membership. There's like there's no downside in that. And look, let me know what you think. What else do you want t- to have? Should I put in this? And and again, there's going to be a lot of free stuff, and then there's going to be some stuff that you got to pay to get. Um, and if you and if you just even look at the budgeting templates that I created, um, it's it's a ton of work. So um, that's it. Let's get to the episode. <laughs> Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Yeah. Everybody, welcome to another episode of Super Agents Live. We have our returning champion, the guy that you guys send tweets about, emails about, Mr. Greg McDaniel. Hey, Greg, thanks for taking the time. What's up, Toby? You know, Ben, you know. So listen, here's what, here's what, uh, let's chat about this today, Greg. We all know that your database is super important. I mean, I did an episode uh, a, a while back. It was called "Your Net Worth Is Your Net Work," and I and you know. So let's talk about database. Where you know how to mine it. Where people are failing in building their database and utilizing. Okay. Well, you know, I'm a typical agent, just like every, anyone else that's listening to this right now. And what we have found is that we didn't really know, you know, what was going on in our database. And so uh, my partners and I sat down and we just kind of hashed it out. And we said, enough of this BS. Let's get in and let's figure out how we can work this because we were finding out that we were missing several hundred deals a year, mm. either a referral or repeat business or new business from you know our past clients because we weren't talking to our clients. And that's one of our been our biggest problem. We always say, you know what, we should really call into our database more. Uh, but then we never do it because life just gets in the way. And so I went out hunting uh, for people that could help us with this problem. And I found um, a gentleman, his name is Al Clark. Uh, he's the co-founder of a company called Home Actions. Uh, it's, a, it's an email newsletter. Um, and when, when I started talking to him, I started asking him, you know, well, what can you do? How does this work? And it's like, it's like 450 bucks for the year, right? So it's, it's incredibly affordable. Um, and what I did is I went out on a limb of faith, and I gave him my username and passwords to all of our social networks. I gave him all my email contacts. I gave him all of access to all of our database. I know a lot of you listening right now are going, holy crap, I can't believe you gave him all that information. But what he did is he has a way of scraping the, the data off of Facebook where he can gather it all, all those emails and all those names, and then he builds you a database with a nice little bow around it and goes, hey, here you go. Here are all your, here's all your database with all the email addresses. Um, and we found that we had 6,442 people in our database as a whole. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I, we were kind of astounded at that number, too. We're, we're continually growing it through bold leads and a couple of other things. But um, what we did is that he, started, he built an email newsletter, and, again, he launched it again this morning for us. Uh, it's our 10th launch with him. Um, we have a seller lead that contacted us today already. Um, it's only been about three hours since we launched it, and we've had about – 40 people or so interacting with the articles. Now, the articles are really interactive and, and, and timely, so people want to see this. We get nothing but positive feedback from this. So if you're looking to get a return, um, we are getting a consistent 17% open rate on, our, on this newsletter, and people are calling us and talking to us about the newsletter that we're sending out. So we are, we're, we, last time we sent it out, I'm not going to know the numbers from this one you know, for a couple of days, but I know last time we had about 68 to 72 people uh, interacting with us multiple times. We can see that on the back end that Home Actions puts together for, for us. Um, and it's been able to really start to get good conversations going with the people in our database. We call them up and say, you know, hey, you know, Toby, you know, thanks for clicking on this link. You know, you wanted to get information about what's going on in the neighborhoods around you this weekend, anything you're, you know, particularly looking for. Um, and it just, it was, it was fun, man. It's nice to contact people and not talk about real estate, but still have that. You know, it's basically, it's, it's a digital pop by, you know? Yeah, right. It's, you know what? So, so, you know, for everybody and you, Greg, I'll tell you this. So, who I've been really watching, if, if you, in the olden days, it's all these guys, uh, uh, Dan Kennedy, um, Joe Polish, Jay Abraham, all these guys are direct response marketers, right? And these are the guys who they got their start 
it with, uh, you know, when people were still doing catalogs and that kind of thing. And then they went from, right, catalogs in print media to online. So what I do is I go to all those guys, right, these super direct response marketer, you know, these guys are killer guys. Um, and I get on their list, right? I get on their list, I subscribe to them, and I see what they do. And one of the things, like I'm looking at Dan Kennedy's right here. So I, I went to his thing, I registered and I didn't buy, you know, he's got an offer. I didn't, I didn't take the offer. I didn't buy it. Um, but I'm, but I'm curious about how they write their copy. Number one, number two, I'm also curious about that follow up, right? So I'm looking at the follow up mm-hmm. right now. So, uh, I'm looking, I just, I'm on my email. So, uh, so, um, uh, email number one, uh, cause I got off his site, right? He sent it to me the next day. Uh, the subject line is frankly, I'm puzzled. Right. Then the next the next one, that was September 17th, September 19th. Toby, I'm curious. Uh, So two days later, September 21st, um, members speak. And then this morning I got another one and it was answers to common questions. So so basically, once I entered his funnel, he has a campaign set up that just, you know, every two days hits me. Um, um. I don't know. I guess I'm just telling you that. I mean, I don't know what your thoughts are on that, but I think that if people, you know, however big their database is, you know, if you can deliver value and, and go out and bring those people back into your funnel, uh, at, you know, I mean, that's a great way to stay top of mind, you know, and you don't have to do I'm puzzle or I'm curious to remember speak, but it could be like, you know, uh, you know, I don't know what's going on in your it community. Could be, it, it, it could be anything as long as there's a, as there's a communication going back and forth. There's a give and a take, right? You you give them something they they uh, they they want some more information you you give it back to them whatever they ask for then you ask something from them right and it's just that it's that it's that seesaw that can you know back and forth back and forth as long as they're still wanting to communicate with you that's the most important thing you know just be 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 top of mind with them without just burying them with emails right because there, there's a site called American Banker uh, that Terry uh, my father and business partner signed signed us up for and. I mean, that thing will that thing will drown you in emails. If there's something going on in the banking world, you get peppered all dang day, but it's too much. Yeah. So it's 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 the question of well, how much should I talk to my database? And that's something we're trying to figure out right now. What we're doing is this: is that we're doing so every 14 days, Home Actions goes out, right? Um, and then we have another company, Get Viral, which I know that you're 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 familiar with. Yeah. We did that, that Google Hangout on. Sure. But then they go out. Every, the, other, the other week. So every single week, one week is a newsletter, one week is a video. One week is a newsletter, one week is a, is, is a video. So I'm touching them you know, four times a month along with any kind of follow-up conversations. And I have another company building a follow-up, kind of beta testing this, this whole idea with me right now. Um, and it's, it's the whole, you know, the, the idea that all real estate agents, I mean, we all chase leads down. But what do we do with the leads when we get them? I mean, right. do we just let them sit there? Or do we actually follow up with them? Because it feels so good to get a lead. It's like, yeah, I got a lead. Awesome. Right. Crap. Now what do I do with it? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. And I, I just, I just want to throw this out there for everybody in the audience, right? If you, again, I think in terms of campaigns, right? And, and especially since guys like, you know, I'm seeing what Jay Abraham and Dan Kennedy and all these guys are doing. Um, if people think that's hard, you, you know, it, it's, it's easy. It's, you can automate that, right? So there's a company called AWeber, and for 19 bucks, you go get an AWeber account. And basically, you know, if you, if you sat down and write all the copy for these campaigns, you uploaded it, and basically you just go, you, you know, once somebody gets in the funnel, like, it's automated. And, and the system knows to send out those emails. Do you use AWeber? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm not a very good content writer. I need, we, I need to get someone to write the content. But yeah. as soon as, like, you know, I, 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 that's one of the things that we're looking into with this other company that we're working with. This is one of the tools that we're kind of exploring. Um, you know, the good thing is, is that with AWeber, you can start for just a dollar. So, I mean, there's yeah. really no right. financial investment here. I mean, as long as you can write a half a sentence, you're going to be good to go. Or just go on e and get someone to write some content for, yeah. for 15 bucks an hour or something like that. You 15 know? bucks, man. I got a, I got a girl off, offshore uh, working right now. And she's like, oh, I said, how much do you get paid? And she's like, oh, my normal rate is $4 an hour. I'm like, look, how about I give you five and, you know, I'll, <laughs> I'll stoke you out. Wow. Five bucks. Oh, oh, Toby, yeah. guys, listen to this. Okay, here's something. Okay, we're going into our, uh, our fourth quarter of the year, to traditionally a very slow time for all of us real estate agents. And, you know, sometimes our mindset changes. You know, we kind of go into holiday mode. Right. But something you should think about. Um, there is something that, Toby, I know that you and I have talked about, but it's called a lead researcher. 
Okay. Again, you can go to Elance. They're about 12 bucks on average, you know, depending on their qualifications. But a lead researcher, what you do is you go to them and you say, hey, Toby, I know you're an awesome lead researcher. Here's my database. Can you please append any additional information that I don't currently have? It can be email addresses, phone numbers, so on and so forth. So you can go get your, your database updated and cleaned up for a very affordable amount of money, which gives you the ability to then go set uh, appointments in, in, you know, in January and February. But here's the really cool part about this. Let's say, you know, Toby, I can't find you anywhere on the web, but I can find your wife. So this system, they'll do what they call a skip trace. The skip trace will go and they'll go find the information on your wife, on her social information, and then, you know, give you that data so you can go contact your wife and then we can hopefully get the, uh, you know, email or phone number or whatever we can so that we can put it into the system and follow up with you. It does sound a little creepy. I will grant you that. But it is very effective, and I was validated yesterday by another uh, coworker of mine who has used these, and she says that you know people will you know very happily give you the information about their their spouse or their sibling or you know child or whoever, uh, because you're going out there and you're trying to help them. Say, hey, look, I'm really trying to update my database. I know I'm following up with Toby at one two three Main Street. Do you happen to have his best number? I seem to have misplaced it. Mm. And- now- well, hold on. So, so just so I'm clear, so you are you are going to an Elance or an Odesk and and right. having somebody offshore do that, right? Exactly. You know what's and funny? You know what? Sorry, go ahead. Huh? No, go ahead. I, well, I was just saying say. that it's that's so affordable, and we always sit there and complain like, God oh, dang it, you know, we missed that listing. Well, you know, we just, they've been in our database since like 2001. Well, the last time we talked to them was 2001. You wonder why you didn't get them, and then their information is bad. I mean, I'm going out today to hand deliver, I think, 15 different packages to folks in our database that we don't have phone numbers for to try to try to, try to get their information. You know, it's it. There's so many different ways to do it. Either you can do high tech, which is skip tracing and lead re, lead research, or do high touch and go out and do some pop buys and just visit people. But fill that database, mine that database. I mean, it is your biggest asset because these people already like you, they trust you, they know you for the most part, and if they don't, dump them. Right. And there's well, no reason to keep them. Yeah, I have two things to say about that. So number one, in terms of affordability, I, I, I just watched a TED Talk um, from this guy. And what he was trying to do is he does he does deep data on TED Talks, right? Why are certain TED Talks, you know, why do the ones that, that kill it, kill it, right? So what he did was there's 1,500 TED Talks at the time that he did his. And he took... Uh, he took uh, – I don't exactly know how he did it, but he basically threw uh, a, a, a job up on Odesk and said, hey, I want you – I want people to summarize uh, this TED Talk and this TED Talk, right? So listen to it for, for 18 minutes, TED Talks for 18 minutes, and give me just a one-sentence summary. Here's the deal. He started uh, – he was paying 10 cents a summary. And, and so and he tells that. So he's like, okay, so he went and summarized those, and then he kind of condensed those. And then he tells the story. He's like, "Hey, I wanted to take those condensed." He sent out packages of five that were five TED talks, kind of related, and sent posted those as a job. And and guess what? He 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 hmm. paid twenty five cents for people to listen and then summarize those. So basically, he analyzed fifteen hundred TED talks for like like less than a hundred bucks. It was craziness. <laughs> I was like, man, I need to use Odesk a lot more or or Elance. Yeah. So it's super super affordable. Here's here's what we you know so you said that you gave this guy Al home actions or whatever all your you login credentials for all your social mm-hmm. media. <clears throat> here's yep. what I would love to do for somebody to do right. So uh, and again outsource this offshore it whatever you have your database and you have certain amounts of information you have a name you have a phone number maybe an email or whatever you know what if you paid somebody to 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 and you gave them their social media stuff and I you know and you said hey listen. Um, for Greg McDaniel, right? He's a guy on my list. Go f- with my Facebook account. Go friend him on Facebook. Go follow him on Twitter. Go go try to connect with him on LinkedIn, right? And then and then you really sort of wrap your brand around the people inside your database. Yeah, that'd be great. I actually just hired another uh, hired a, a social media lady. Her name is Diane for another side project that I'm working on right now. Which is when it happens, dude, I'll tell you about it. It's super exciting. But anyways. Um, she, uh, she's supposed to be doing the same thing, but she's not, she's not going to be, you know, that cheap. But I mean, if they, if you can just hire someone that can go out there and just do that, follow up, be consistent, do content marketing that's out there, educating the, you know, your database on, on what they want to know about, you're going to win. People are going to reach back out to you. I mean, yeah. I, as we've spoken, I've gotten eight to 10, I've gotten 12, 16, 16 more responses from my newsletter as, since we've been on the phone call. 
Amazing, dude. We, and that is unbelievable. That's one. That's more than one a minute. We've been, only been recording for thirteen minutes. Um, yeah, man. I mean, I, I I do think if 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 you know, there's people need to start to think of ways to differentiate themselves, right? I mean, people will say, you know, and you hear this kind of stuff all the time, right? <clears throat> you know, have a differentiator, number one. Have a unique selling proposition. And if people, you know, people out there listening, you know, do you have that? Do you say, I am different because of this, right? Or, or you, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. how do you think well, about wait, that? Why, why should I hire you versus, right. you know, Bob down the street right. who works for ABC Realty, right? Yeah, and, and again, so if you, if, if you try, if you, again, if I was in your database and I see you that you friended me on Facebook, um, that you messaged me on LinkedIn. You know, I, I would think that you know, geez, Greg is everywhere. He's omnipresent, right? He's mm-hmm. um, man. And that is the most important thing. I mean, so many times when it comes to social media, people drop the ball in regards. And I'm, and I'm being reviewed by another company right now that's showing me all the loop, all the problems in my in my, in my social media, and it's pretty astounding. I thought we were doing pretty good, but. There's so much stuff. I mean, you have to be consistently messaging back and forth. If someone comments on something that you do, you can't just say, oh, that's nice, and like it. You have to right. actually follow up with them, start right. a conversation. It's, it's a digital, you know, digital cocktail party. Right. You know, talk back and forth with these people. Be entertaining. Be, be, you know, be involved in their lives as well. But so, much, so many times we just look at it and be like, oh, yeah, look, at there's Frank right there, and uh, he liked my photo. Okay, that's great. We never go back and re- interact with, with that individual. Yeah. And that's the same thing when it comes to your database. Interact with these people. Um, and if you don't want to do it digitally, I mean, come on, let's get, to, get them together. Go, go do an event month. Yes. I mean, that's some, I mean, that's something you and I can do another segment on because I have a, a three different styles of events, you know, monthly, quarterly, and yearly. And I can, I, we can dive deep on that if, you want, if, the, if the listeners want that. But, I mean, we found that to be incredibly successful for our team as well. Well, look, I, I mean, we don't, I mean, this is a, we're at 15 minutes I and mean, we can make this a 30 minute and, and do it sort of, um, you know, as, as bonus content for everybody. Um, so yeah, so let's dig into that because I was just going to say that, right. You need to take, you know, when you can interact with somebody, meet somebody online, you know, you win when you take it offline. So I, you know, I, I just had somebody on the show and that's what he said. He said, Hey, you know, once a month, um, and this is he kind of was doing this around a farm, but you know, once a month, you know, just I- invite everybody to happy hour, right? right. And, and, and he's like, and I said, well, do you pay for drinks? And he said, no, man, just you know, just be the connector, be the hub. And I was like, that's a brilliant idea, you know. It's just it's it sounds so simple and and kind of kind of dumb that you know I, people don't do it. I don't I don't know, but yeah, let's talk about events. Yeah. Okay. So. At the events, everyone gets like, well, I don't want to do a big event, or I don't have a big sphere of influence, or I just got in the business, I don't know anybody. Yeah, but you know what? You've been a human being for X amount of years. I mean, you do have a number of folks that actually know you and like you. If not, then we've got a problem we're going to talk about you know, some, some other time. But, you know, if, when it comes down to doing events, here are the three different styles that you need to do. All right. You need to do monthly. So a monthly, like what you just talked about, it's either, you know, a happy hour, it's a wine tasting, it's a, you know, come, come to this restaurant, let's do a painting night, let's do, you know, poetry night, you know, mm. whatever. Right. You know, gardening events, whatever it is that you get, kind of gets you rocking and rolling. But invite your, your, your sphere of influence. Anybody you know, and we're talking about family, friends, relatives, uh, past people that you know that you don't even know if you if they like you or not. Just invite them. They're just appreciated. Just being invited to the event. You're going to have a low turnout no matter what, and you actually want a lower turnout because you want this to be a little bit more intimate. Yeah. You want to get to know these folks. You want to know about their kids, their spouses, their work, their lives, their wins, their losses, all of these things that make them a human being. That's the connector. That's what you're talking about. Being that connector there. Now it's up to you if you want to pay for the drinks or not pay for the drinks. That's really your call. You know. Uh, if you're having a low turnout and you say, look, I'll buy the first glass of wine or first beer and you get a bigger turnout, hey, bonus. And you build it into your marketing budget. Mm, yeah. But you send it out. Make it different. Make it unique. Do 12 unique events a year. 12 unique events a year. And they don't have to be earth-shaking. Maybe it's trying a new restaurant. Maybe it's, you know, going to a, a movie premiere at, at a new, uh, new movie theater. Who knows? Just be creative and have fun. Work with the local merchants. Work with a restaurant that just opened up. Say, hey, look, oh, I want to promote you. Help me get my people in here. Give me a discount to get my people, my, my, my sphere of influence in here. We'll be, we'll be your word of mouth, you know, uh, liaisons and go out and, and talk to everybody around here. You know, do something like that. They would well, love and, to work with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And let me jump in there. I was, I was just going to say that. But you were rattling on so fast. But so uh, <laughs> one guy that I was working with, I was coaching with him. 
We talked about this, right? So there was yeah. a new restaurant that just opened up, and I said, "Listen, go talk with them and see what you know. See if you can have an event there, you know." And so here's the deal: so he we went and talked with them. They were brand new. They're more than happy to help, and uh, and they it was just, they they cut a sweetheart deal for him, and it was basically five bucks a person, and for and it was a I think it was like a lunch thing, so it wasn't drinks, drinks, but uh, five bucks a person, and um and uh, everybody got uh, like a drink, like a coke, right? Uh, but, but they, they gave him, uh, free appetizers, right? So everybody, cause they wanted people to go to the restaurant. They wanted people to, to taste how great their food is. So, and I was like, oh my gosh, five bucks a head. And you know, wow. you pray down this super event. And then I said, well, man, maybe, maybe you could even, you know, make money on that, right? If you're paying five bucks, you know, why don't you just charge 10 bucks, um, and, and bill it as, hey, you know, uh, free appetizers for two hours or whatever. And now, uh, now he didn't do that, awesome. um, but, but you, you, he certainly could have. Yeah, you, you absolutely could have. And you know what? Let's say that uh, food's not your gig, right? I mean, if you're the, food's not your gig, we, you know, whatever. But uh, I, I had this idea. I was talking to this lady uh, the other day. She's one of my students, and she, <laughs> she has like six dogs and two cats, right? She's got a serious pet issue. Um, but I thought about this. I'm like, what if? Why don't you do this? If you if you have a big thing for pets, why don't you do combine a couple of things? So, go talk to a local pet groomer, right? Maybe they're just starting or someone that's established or whatnot. Go say, hey, look, I, come to my event and create an event with maybe a, a shelter, or just go to a local dog park and offer free, uh, you know, groomings or tail, you know, not, not tail clippings, nail clippings <laughs> uh, <laughs> for the for the pets. Um, and, but they just be there, you know, bring your dog or cat down, you know, get people at the dog park and they'll be buzzing about it. Cause you can post up signs. Hey, come this day at this times and you can get a free, free, whatever for your animal. Um, and maybe even help people adopt a few pets. Mm. And that's just, that's just goodwill going out all over the place right. and helping save a few dogs and cats. So that, that's another idea of just getting involved on a monthly event with people in your area right so you could do right so yeah i i I love that idea so but you can do you know monthly events but you can also do seasonal events right so right now we're recording in september next month is october right the 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 month of like pumpkin patches and uh, Mm -hmm. and stuff like that so you know it seems uh um I don't know. It seems like I don't know. I'm like I don't know any ideas about what you can do around a pumpkin patch, but maybe you could do something around you know a pumpkin patch and get the family involved, not just oh, yeah. you know John Smith. Oh yeah. Uh, well, hold on. So let's do this real quick. Let's let's go let's go over the three different uh, types and we'll jump back to the pumpkin. So okay. we have the monthly we just covered, right? Yep. That goes out to everybody you know, and and then some. You want as many people as humanly possible. Then you go to your quarterly events. Now you have four quarters in a year naturally. So every quarter, so let's say, you know, uh, July, August, and September, which we're coming to the end of this quarter, you go back and you talk to all the people you did business with that quarter and then invite them to a little bit more of an upscale event, maybe um, going to a restaurant or having a personal chef come to your home and do a food and wine pairing, um, maybe going to a play in the city or doing something a little bit, you know, put a suit and tie on, go make it special. Spend a few bucks on these people. They made you tens of thousands of dollars in the last couple of months. Go show appreciation to them. It's a subtle thing. And some, some months are going to be bigger events. Some months are going to be, I mean, quarters are going to be smaller events. But that's okay. It's still taking it up one level. So now our final one, our yearly event. This is going to be your big, huge, gigantic blowout. And again, this is going to be like your monthly event. You're going to, all the people you've done business with, any prospects, everybody you know, you want them to be there, and then you're going to invite them to bring somebody so that you can get more people to your event to meet you in a non-real estate format. So, for instance, what kind of big of events Big events would I recommend? Well, we have done for years and years and years a Cinco de Mayo event. It's uh, been extremely valuable to us. Uh, we have hundreds of people that roll through this thing because it's, it's a stop-in event. Um, for a couple of years, we didn't allow kids I mean, because it was, you know, drinking and food and adults and all that stuff. And then we said, you know what, why don't we allow the kids for a certain amount of time? Our, our, our return rate of people saying, yes, they would come almost tripled. Oh, I, because, I imagine. Yeah, for sure. Oh, it was unbelievable. And we learned such a valuable lesson there. And I mean, we, we, we catered it. We had a, uh, you know, beer on tap. We had a margarita machine. We had food. We had, a, you know, high school, we hired a couple of high school girls to watch the kids. Uh, so the parents could have a little bit of fun while the kids could be watched watched mm-hmm. after. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we hired some staff to go in and just help clean up and keep the house moving. Um, but it was such a fun thing that when we you should have got a snow cone machine. 
wow, that's such a good idea. Yeah. That's such a good idea. I'm going to mention that to him, and we should totally do that. For sure. Uh, like, one year, we just, we just, you know, we just kind of dropped the ball. We just didn't get people, you know, we just didn't get the party together for whatever reason, right? Well, people started calling us and very sheepishly asking if they didn't make the list anymore. Oh, like, my gosh. So, did did we get cut from the list? Oh, my <laughs> and God. We're like, <laughs> we're like, no, we just totally, we, we just dropped the ball. We'll make sure we do it again next year. We're so sorry. And then we, when he all sent a little apology, something and, you know, sent a little coupon out to him. But, you know, it's, people will start, they, they'll plan their, their, their part of their summer around these events if you do it right. Because it, it, it's an event. Like, it, it's something that they really look forward to. And it, it is a lot of fun. You kick back at the end of the night, you have a couple of beers, and you're just sitting around with your feet up talking to, you know, put some of your past clients and, you know, some right around that time, like, oh, by the way, man, I uh, I gotta introduce you to this guy, or you know, I I really this girl at work, you know, I think she's thinking about selling, or something's gonna happen like that, right? But it's just connecting, being a human, man. People have got to remember to do that. I agree, you know, and there, and if you think about events, I mean, look, that's I think I think people are gonna hear that and go, oh man, that's a great idea, but. You know, that's that it's a lot of work and it is a lot of work um, Two, you know, that's it sounds expensive and, 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 and you're going to you're going to spend some some money on it. Right. Because, I mean, you in that story, you said we hired a couple of staff to do this and, you know, you, you have headcount there. So I think a lot of people go like, man, I don't know if I can do that. Um, but I think, you know, going back to like the seasonal thing, I think there's stuff that, you know, if you you know, what about what about um, uh, at the end of the school year? Um, you know, around your local elementary school or, you know, f- f- certainly we're talking about mar- mining your database. But, you know, what if you hired some kind of like CPR guy and, uh, you know, you did water safety classes because you know that in the summertime people, you know, all the kids are going to be swimming. Right. So, hey, come and learn, uh, you know, CPR or, or water safety strategies or, uh, you know, I don't know, but um, whatever, just to make the kids safe. They maybe, you know, we're going to find one of those uh, trinket people that uh, you can maybe brand a a beach ball or brand a towel or brand something as a giveaway that Mm. people can take away from, from it. So they, they, they have your brand walking around with them. Yeah. It can be extremely inexpensive. I mean, it does not have to be an expensive item, but it's just, you know, doing that kind of like local interaction, like you're talking about the, uh, the whole idea with the, uh, with, with the CPR is fantastic. Or if you don't want to spend money, why don't you just go to a local park that's in the in, it's in your area and do a potluck? People love to show off their best, you know, their best cooking abilities, or do a barbecue or something. Who cares? Just get people together. And I think, all that yeah, yeah. And so, but this is a great way. I mean, so so this is all about mining your database. So you have your database, but you know, what if you had a farm, right? So this is something that you could you could uh, do at the local park in your farm, or I don't know what it is, um, but you invite all the people in the area. Yeah. It's a great idea, you For know. Sure. And look, and you know, and we're a little bit off. You know, I'm moving a little bit to the right here, but you know, one thing that I always, you know, if somebody has a farm, one thing that I always say is, I'm like, hey, try to organize, uh, uh, you know, in the spring or the or the begin or in the fall, like um, a a a block yard sale. Right? I went to one at the beginning of summer. By you know, in my kind of neighborhood here, we're driving by, and and uh, it was like Saturday morning, Sunday morning, whatever. And I see this yard sale sign, and I, and me and my wife and kids, man, we love yard sales. You never know what you're gonna come up against. So, so we see this yard sale sign, and then we and we go to the next street and we see another sign. I'm like, holy smokes! Like this is the first yard sale that is really like promoted in the right way because there's the right you know right signs that are giving me directions. So it's like, okay, we gotta go. We go, we stop at the first place and we stop in and I walk up and I see a map and it was like a map of the like the whole neighborhood and and where there are yard sales and I was like whoa like this is really really professional and then lo and behold I see just underneath like the 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 little map holder thing and it was just a a piece of eight and a half by 11 piece of paper Uh, Mm -hmm. but it was some Keller Williams guy so it was a real estate guy that put it on and and was funneling people through the neighborhood right he and and I was like man what a great way to write you know maybe you hate door knocking but maybe if you door knocked in that way and said hey listen you know I've been talking you know I'm I'm uh, Toby Salgado I've taken over this area and you know the neighbors have been talking about doing a block yard sale. I don't even. There's got to be another name for it um, uh, that I can't think. Group of. yard sale. Group I mean, neighborhood, <laughs> I mean, neighborhood sale. I think, I, mean, it's just like, I think it's just like a block sale. I think that's the that's, whatever. Um, but but what a great way. If, you know I would uh, you know if you knocked on my door, I'd be like, oh, that guy is adding value to me in my life. 
Absolutely. There was an agent that did that here in my office. Um, and I, I saw them walking out and I'm like, Hey, that's great. You guys are doing, you know, a couple of houses for uh, the, you know, with a, with a, with a yard sale. She's like a couple of houses, try 35. I'm like, you're doing 35 houses together. She's like, Oh yeah. I'm like, how, how did you manage that? She's like, I just went around door knocked and talked to people. Yeah. I'm like that's awesome. That is awesome. I mean, that's, I mean, I talk about health and families and, you know, we were, you were just, you brought up a really good point and you kind of triggered something and it's, why don't people do, you know, you do, you're talking about seasonal stuff. So do seasonal events, do a quarterly or seasonal event stuff, but do it for a good cause or a charity. And I just thought about this, you know, in summertime, maybe go down to a new, a, lo- a local yogurt shop or an ice cream shop or something like that and say, look, I want to do a free scoop of ice cream. I will pay 50 cents per scoop or 25% per, cents, uh, per scoop, right? But all that money, well, people will pay that much, and then all that money goes back down to a fundraising cost. Maybe it's uh, uh, junior, di- junior diabetics, or maybe it's uh, cancer, or maybe it's some sort of thing that's, that, that's prevalent in your area that, that pulls on your heartstrings. So then you can get a, di- you know, a tax write-off on all this stuff, and they could maybe do a, they could, they could buy scoops for other people to increase the mm. expense. Yeah. Like a pay it forward. Thing. I like that. But what about this? So, so, so if you were going to do that, I don't know that I'd do a charity, right? Because, you know, some charities will resonate with with some people and and others, but or not others. But again, imagine you have a farm. There's got to be an elementary school in, 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 around that farm, right? Wherever you're farming, those kids go to school somewhere. So, what if you went to that principal and said, "Hey, listen, you know what? What are you struggling with, right? Do you, you know, do do you need new?" outfits for band or do you what what do you need and that's a great idea and that's the thing right so hey listen we're doing a fundraiser for fuerte elementary school the school's struggling with whatever you know right um that's i think i think again you know if you that's something you could resonate with because it's in your community it's in your neighborhood right your kids might even go to that school but it doesn't matter but if that's your farm area that's huge because those parents especially in areas that might not be as well off as other areas yeah you know what? That because we have a district here called the Mount Apple School District, and there's good schools and bad schools. Overall, it kind of has a reputation that's not being the best, right? A little rougher around the edges. But if you're able to go in and bring value to these teachers and these students and donate to them, I think that's amazing. Another uh, another lady in one of my classes, she actually, um, she, she, I'm like, give me an idea of an event that you would do, right? And she's like, well, what about doing a clean up your neighborhood day? I'm like, please unpack that a little bit more for me. Yeah. She's like, well. What about if I was to go talk to the sanitation department of, a, of the city that we're talking about uh, in Walnut Creek, say, look, I want to do a cleanup day. And then you go and you talk to the, all the different schools and you get these parents and kids out there. You organize this event where they go out and they learn about the benefits of not littering and you help them clean up the litter around the schools. And I said, I absolutely love this. Go. And she went and did it and it was an absolute knockout of the park success. Mm. And again, it's another, another, you know, you're helping your community. It doesn't cost you anything, and your goodwill all over the place. Right. Between you and me, we got the we got we got raising money for kids for the schools, and we got, we're cleaning up the schools. We're doing so we're doing pretty well so far. For sure, <laughs> you know. And and look, I, I think you know if if uh, this is this, uh, hopefully people can find value in this. I mean, it's it's certainly fun to hear and fun to play with and talk about. But you know, at the end of the day, I think people it goes back to the thought that people go well. I don't know enough people now. It, it, so I think number one, if even if you don't have a big database, um, you know these are a couple methods that you can build your database. That you don't need a database to do this stuff, right? Because you're doing it around your farm. No. But I think the other thing that people miss is when they when they think about man, I don't have a big enough database. You know, you should go even if you're 45 years old, right? And even if you've moved cities, you should go get your high school yearbooks and Facebook friend all those people. Right. And, mm-hmm. and get them and start, you know, get them on a list. Right. Um, um, you know, so Facebook them, connect with them on LinkedIn. I mean, you, you know, that's how you, even if you don't have a list or a database, that's how you start to build it. And then you, you know start what, to mail it. I have I, I have a sheet of people that could be your in your potential SOI list. I, and if you want, you could give it a, give it out to you know, all the viewers and listeners uh, that, that, that want it. And I would be happy to send this to you so that you can uh, get it out to them. Because there's, when I show this in my class, people are just dumped down to like, Oh yeah, I should talk to my spouse's people, or mm-hmm. yeah, I should talk to my laundry person, or yeah, I should talk to you know X, Y, and Z. But you have more people than you know that are around you yeah. that want to help you. All you have to do is open your mouth and ask for their involvement. 
they, you will see support like you've never seen support because they will take it over and it will now become their event. And you want them to do that. Yeah. You want them to take ownership of it because you're, you're still the one facilitating the entire thing. But as long as you're, you're working with them and you're just being involved, if you're not, you might not get business from this the first time. But it's not about that. It's about building the relationship. It's about learning what people want and then being involved in their lives. They will start caring about you as soon as they know that you care about them first. Yeah, I agree with that, man. I agree with that. And, and um, so, so I had Wendy Papasan on the show, and Wendy, her story is she was a mom. All her kids went to school. And she's like, I got to do something. She didn't have a list. She didn't know anybody. What, but what she did was she leveraged her husband's database. And guess mm-hmm. what? Her first year, she did twenty million dollars working part time. Oh. That's yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> yeah. And then and I think now like year four, she's going to do like 65. And, and here's the thing. Right? So I agree with you. And I think people many times have the wrong attitude. They're, they might do an event. and They're like, oh, crap, man, I did all this work. I didn't get any deals from it. And I think what people forget is, you know, e- even if, you know, let's say that you're going after expireds or FISBOs and you, you know, you call that exp- FISBO expired, whatever, the first day, maybe you even show up to his house. The deal is conversion happens typically between the eighth and twelfth contact. Not one through five or one through seven. It's typically eight through twelve. And I think that's mm-hmm. what people forget, man. It's you know, it's you know, there you can say your your net worth is your network and, and the fortune is in the follow up, right? That's you have to just keep keep, you know, stay top of mind with these people. And you know, between eighth and twelve, something's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. I mean uh, here's an example, man. I'm following up with one of my online leads right now, and that's about a $3 million total deal. He has, he has a duplex, and he has a very large home in Walnut Creek. He wants to sell them. He's having some financial you know, trials and tribulations, but um, I called him. I called him. I emailed him. I emailed him. I emailed him. I emailed him. They got no response. And so finally I'm like, gosh dang it. What in the blank is going on here? So I, found his, I, got, his, I got a hold of his cell number, and I shot him a quick text. He hit me back immediately oh, yeah. going, hey, Greg, I'm so sorry I haven't been getting back to you. You know, I had surgery, and then now I'm working so much. You know, we should definitely get together. I want to talk to you about selling these properties. And, Mike, I don't know where it was, but it was definitely in that, in that kill zone of, you know, the 8 to 12. Absolutely. Probably on the higher near the 12 mark. Hmm. So, I mean, $3 million deal is going to take place. Uh, two properties, and I'm going to be able to help an investor and a family get into two different properties purely by not just laying down and taking no. Yeah. Because you don't know what's happening in these people's lives. Never stop, li- never stop following up until they either die or buy. Right. Okay. Because you never know. I yeah. Mean, you never know. Yeah. And and even if even if you know, look, there's plenty of times where where for me, you know, when I was when I was going through houses, and I was flipping houses, right? I, I would have um, realtors call me, and sometimes, man, they would get me when I'm in a bad mood. And I was, and you know, I'm a pretty nice guy in general, but sometimes I'd be pretty short and like, I'm like, dude, like, what is your problem? Don't call me at, at 8:30 in the morning, you know. But but you know, the people who could shake that off and call me again, guess what, man? The next time they called me, I remembered like how I treated them, and I was like all you know, I was very receptive to them the next time, right? Because I felt bad about that, you know. Um, so of course, you got to have a thick skin. Uh, you know, one of the things that you, you that you touched on there, I think, is really important, right? So earlier we talked about like wrapping your brand uh, and your message around the people in your database, right? With Facebook mm-hmm. and LinkedIn and Twitter and all that, but but that SMS, that that text message marketing is super, super powerful. It's super important because there's lots of emails that I will look at the sender, I will look at the subject line, and I won't open them, right? Because mm-hmm. I'm like, a, but how many texts have you not read? Oh, I've read every single one. Are you kidding me? I'm curious beyond the No, zero. Well, I, well, you, you can't help but read it, man. If you can keep your, your message on text, you know, less than 140 characters, like on my iPhone, I literally have to swipe and open it to, to, get, to get it off my screen. So, yeah, uh, anyhow. But, but, but be careful on that. But don't do random text messaging to, to random people. They, they'll kind of think you're a weirdo. But if there are people that you can follow up with and they know and they've you know, spoken with them and you shoot them a quick little text, hey, man. Just drove past your house. Hope you're doing well. You know, something like that. Huge. Well, I, Huge. yeah. Well, look, I would. I, I mean, I would. I would disagree with you there. I mean, I. I. I if you can create a message, um, even if they don't know you, 
like I would say you sh- you it, totally acceptable to text him as long you as your what, messaging would, is right. I would love to hear from your audience on what their opinion is, is on that because we have an ongoing debate here on our team of like should you or should you not text people? You know what? Yeah, we, that shouldn't I mean, be a Eileen, our team manager, she's like, if you text me and I don't know you, I'm going to ban you for life. You know, you can't, I'm how like, are you going to ban me for life? For that. Well, that, she's, 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 she's wrong. I'm telling you right now, she's wrong. <laughs> All right, yeah, well, look. I wouldn't. <laughs> What's that? I said I wouldn't tell her that to her face. Oh, but. really? I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, she's, she's totally wrong. That's completely wrong. I've talked to, with too many people that, uh, on this topic. But, uh, look. If you guys have an opinion out there um, and the right protocol for for sending, you know, marketing on text, uh, send me an email. Send Greg an email. Uh, what's your crazy yeah. email, Greg? Uh, greatest email is going to be. I'll give you guys my personal one. It's my last name. It's McDaniel dot four four the two numbers at gmail dot com. So it's McDaniel dot forty four at gmail dot com. That'll go directly to me. It's the best way to get a hold of me, guys. And I would love to hear your feedback. Yeah, and 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 or you know, drop it out on the on the old Twitter. Um, yeah. So hey, Greg, uh, dude, let's wrap, man. We wanted to do a fifteen minute. We're at forty minutes. This is a whole episode, <laughs> dude. Uh, anything else you? That's when we get talking. I know. Anything else you want to add before we sign off? No, man, I just, uh, as always, the invitation to reach out to me always stands, you guys. You know, there has been a large, you know, pretty good amount of you that have actually reached out to me, and it's, it's pretty funny when I, when I, when someone calls me or emails me and I call them right back, they're like, oh my, oh my God, like, I, I can't believe you actually got back to me that quickly. I'm like, well, I told you I would. Right. You right. know, and so I'm here to help, guys. Um, I'm always, you know, I'm just, a, I'm pleased and honored to be a part of, uh, Tony, Tony, uh, Tony. Toby. What? What's the matter with you? <laughs> <laughs> people um, don't know, man, show, but, but we talk we talk every week. We and we've talked we every week for almost a year. So um uh anyhow. Uh you have a terrible memory, Greg. So um I was yeah, gonna, I was gonna okay. say something else. But yeah, that's it. All right, hey bud, thanks for coming on. I know you're a busy guy. Uh, and look, so so everybody knows that that uh with Bob Corcoran, you know, they can get a free coaching call. Do you do that same thing, Greg? Yeah, I, I'll do a free coaching call for sure. For you my know, audience kind of only. Understand where, where you're going. For your audience only. I, do, I don't offer that anywhere else. I cool. mean, you, like you said, you, we've been talking for a year every week, bouncing ideas back and forth, keeping the accountability partners, you know, coaching each other back and forth. And you know what? For you, yes. For anyone else, absolutely not. Your audience is only. Awesome. All right, bud. Thanks, man. Thanks, buddy. I really appreciate it. See ya. See ya. <clears throat> Hey, everybody. We're going to do a quick segment with a friend of mine. But before I get into it, I want to share with you why I'm doing this segment. Now, as you guys know, I'm a big believer in personal development. And in order to grow, grow personally, there's lots of ways you can do that. You know, you can read a book. You can listen to podcasts like you're listening to this one. But one thing I love is live events. Now, for me... I try to get to one event per quarter. Now, and I, I've talked about it on the show. You know, this year, uh, in January, I was at Numidy Expo. Um, uh, in uh, June, I was in Portland for World Domination Summit. I was at Go. Uh, I think I think in August, I was at Go Abundance with uh, David Osborne. And uh, just a few weeks ago, I was on the East Coast at an unnamed event. Now, uh, and 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 I'm thinking about doing the Anthony Robbins Date with Destiny in December. So that's my four. For the year. Now, I encourage all of you to go out and get some real life face to face learning. Today, we're going to spend a few minutes with a friend of the show, and that's Bubba Mills of Corcoran Coaching. And we're going to talk about why his CEO summit happening uh, in just a few weeks, November 12th to 14th, 2014, might be a good place for you to go and learn some new skills. Hey, Bubba, thanks for coming on. I appreciate you having me, Toby. Yeah, so listen, you and Bob are putting together this CEO summit. Uh, tell, us, uh, tell us a little bit about why people, sh- you know, tell us about the event and why people should attend. Well, the event, and just so you know, it is focused towards team leaders, broker, broker owners, or franchise owners. This is not for um, single agents or, or, or any, anybody else. This is focused on individuals that want to be the CEO of their business because we've learned that, most people who are team leads or are broker owners, they're great salespeople. However, they're horrible, horrible at the operations side of business. Yeah. 
I agree. And look, and it's it's one of those things where, you know, people go and they, they you know, you might be a great salesperson. You can close, you know, 95% of the listing presents you go to. But when it comes to stuff like, uh, you know, reading a balance sheet, when it comes to stuff like actually doing effective hiring and retention, I mean, it, <laughs> those people don't know that. No, and you know we we do go over um, hiring strategies. We go over retention strategy, building a team, um, teams versus individuals, creating a culture. You know what? Is, what does your mission and vision statement say about you to the public? And you know we go over five dysfunctions of a team, which is mm. probably one of the most important impactful things that happen in a business is dysfunctions. You know, along with, I mean, it's it's two and a half days of information. We go over client concierge department, which most people know is their past client program. We're going to teach you how to put that on the scale rates and be able to get 30 to 40% of your business next year being referrals. We talk about exit strategies. We talk about your P&L, goals. You know, becoming a team lead. You know, what is that? You know, ways to retain and empower your team. You know, daily huddles. But, you know, it, it, it's, it's funny because, yes, me and Bob are the presenters. And, in fact, we have a, a guest speaker. His name is Dave Beeson, um, which has been in this industry for over 25 years. And he is he's absolutely awesome. And, and Dave's actually covering a topic, and that's real estate legends hmm. and how to become one. Interesting. Um, you know, it's funny. So the five dysfunctions of a team. Now, that's a book. That's a, a Patrick. Um, I don't know how to say his last name. Lencioni. Lencioni. Um, yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure that guy would come and speak. Did you ask him? Um, we did. He's actually booked for this time. Mm, and it, we, 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 you know, when, when we coach, you know, there's, there's several different implementation tactics. And what it comes down to is, is are you implementing it? So it's not just the five dysfunctions of a team book, which is a great book. Everybody needs to read it. However, it's implementing it into your company, how to be able to implement it. I mean, we have, we have strategies built in there where there's questionnaires that we provide, and our clients provide these questionnaires out to every single one um, of the people on the team, and, and it's, a, you know, it's unanimous. We can do it through SurveyMonkey or anything else. So you can see where you're not hitting or hitting. And then what we do is we help coach you into how to be able to overcome that dysfunction, how to be able to turn that dysfunction into an empowerment tool. Now, well, hold, just so I'm clear and the, and the audience is clear, so is this open to everybody or do you have to be one of your clients? No, this is open to Every single person who sells real estate, however, it is focused for team leads and hire, not for individual agents. If you're looking to build a team or you're looking to go independent or buy a franchise, then this is the event for you. And see, and this is why I wanted to have you on the uh, and, and do this quick segment because – in terms of bang for your buck, right? So people can hire, and it's no secret, you know, Bob Corcoran, he charges five grand a month and you get two calls with a guy. And an event like this is much less than that. Uh, and, I, you know, we don't, I don't want to talk about prices, but we'll, we'll send people to uh, uh, some whatever page you want to send them to. But this is a, 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 an opportunity to get to spend face-to-face time with a guy like you, with a guy like Bob Corcoran, uh, and, and, you know, and get, that, you know, get that knowledge from him without spending five grand a month. Well, and also the blessing on top of it, and a lot of feedback that we get. You know, we coach over 80 agents that are on the Wall Street Journal um, top 250 in, in uh, units and volume. Every single year we have that many clients. Well, we also have panels of peers, people that are on the Wall Street Journal list. Mm. You know, we get at least, you know, probably, you know, 25 to 30 of them that come to our boot camps every single year out of the people that we coach. And so it's not just us. It's also your peers what they went through being able to get to that 850 unit mark, what they did to get to that 250 mark, because they're just now integrating the team effects in there. You know, what obstacles they had to overcome, how they, you know, how they talk to their team, how they run their team advances. I mean, it's not just us. I mean, we have four panels throughout the three days of people that are in the business just like every single one of your listeners. Right. And see, this is, you know, this, uh, this is, again, another reason why I love live events, because I think there's two, you, you know, with coaching, for example, you know, people can say, oh, listen, you need to be six months ahead of the market. Well, that's not coaching. I, I, you know, tell me what that is. Tell me how, like, give me rubber meets, <laughs> give me things. 
Um, so, and I'm sure let's, you, you, it sounds like you're very much rubber meets road. Here are tactics. Go and implement them. Yes, we are the road. Because most people sit there and spin their wheels. They're the rubber. It's time for you to meet us, mm. and let's move forward. Interesting. Did you have that analogy in your head before? Did you just make that up on the fly? I just made that up on the fly. Because that was good. That was good. Um, Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> so, so, you know, if somebody went um, uh, to this event, I mean, tell me, like, I'm sure you see transformation, right, from, you know, the day one to day three. Like, what, what, typically, what kind of transformation do you see from people who go to events like this? It's called bigger picture aha moments. As coaches, you know, it's funny, the old stigma, you know, we see more in you than you see in you. Well, right. it's, it's actually a very true, it's a very true statement. However, from day one, not having any, you know, experience in coaching or seeing the big picture to day three, it's, it's life changing. I mean, when we talk about building a culture in your company, you know, culture is the number one fundamental foundation of every single company out there. When you think about any company out there, when we build a foundation, we can build anything we want to on top of it. The sky is the limit. So when, when we start out day one, it, it's, about, it's about team building. Hmm. You know, it's about how to culturalize your company. It's about effective communication. It's, you know, we, we have interviewing and hiring processes. You know, that night we, we actually have, we have a networking dinner. And just so you know, all the meals are included for this. All you have to do is pay for airfare and hotel. We cover all the meals. Um, yes, we do have an open bar for an hour and a half. Um, and then meals are covered through the entire three days. You don't have to pay for any kind of food. Just pay for your airfare. It, you're be coming into St. Louis Airport. And uh, we are in, on the Illinois side, 12 miles from the Arch. Mm. Interesting. So, so here's one thing that I get, I get, you know, I get, I get a, a lot of emails from the audience and they ask me questions. Now, one thing that I'm hearing lately, and I'm not sure if it's because, because people are listening to my show and they're hearing stuff, but systems, right? People want to systematize their business. And, and I think that the, the thing, Bubba, that, that a lot of the top, top people are trying to get to is they're trying to normalize the experience, meaning that if you go into McDonald's in L.A. and then go into McDonald's in Chicago, you're going to get the same experience. Um, yes. Whereas if you go into a Remax office in in L.A. and then you go and do the same thing in Chicago, like a whole different experience. And I think, you know, that's what I'm hearing. Like, how do I systematize my business, number one, to create this very normalized experience for my clients? What's your take on that? I, I love it. I mean, we are, we consider it operational excellence and system oriented coaching. And our philosophy is if you have to do anything more than once, then you have to have a system for it. Mm. If, if any two times you have to do something that's duplicatable, why not build an action plan, build a system around it? You know, and as our coaching philosophy, we don't assign a task to a person because people are replaceable. We assign a task to a position or yeah. a department because a lot of people make the failures. Perfect coaching example. They make the coaches, you know, if I assign that, you know, my, my marketing implementation plan has to be to Toby. Well, if Toby goes and leaves for another company, I have to change that entire action plan. No, you assign it to, assign it to the position. And then every single time a, a new listing comes up or a buyer or if it's pre-marketing um, or if you're going after FISBOs expired, so those action plans are assigned to a position and you never have to change the system again. Yeah. No, I, 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 yeah, I love it. And that's, I'm seeing that same thing where – Really yeah. has ownership of the thing, right? You have ownership. The position has ownership of that piece, like get, taking the lead, putting into the system, putting them on a drip campaign, and then boom, it goes to the next person. So listen, Bob, I know you're busy planning for this. I know it's happening November 12th. We're recording October 27, so it's, we're only a few weeks away. Um, where can people learn more about this? Where can we send them to if they're interested in going? Okay, so if you go to www. Corcoran Coaching, that is C-O-R-C-O-R-A-N, coaching.com. Click on events, and then click on the CEO boot camp. Now, I will give all of your listeners a promotional discount for listening to this podcast. If you use the promotion code SUPER799, SUPER799, right now the price 
is at nine hundred and ninety nine dollars. With that discount code, you will get in for seven hundred and ninety nine dollars. I will let everybody know we max this boot camp out at one hundred people. This is not a mega conference that we do every year. We have other ones for that. This one is capped at one hundred people and seats are very limited. So if you're gonna you're gonna make this commitment, you need to make it soon because once it's filled up, it's it's not nobody else can get in. Got it. Got it. And what I was thinking of on that four and by the way, thanks for that. I was thinking of uh, the uh, it's the, the, the uh, just assembly line, right, or, or production line. Right? You, you put you know, the, the, the car, the parts go across the production line. Everybody has their piece, and nobody owns the thing, and, and it kicks out you know, a car. In this case, it kicks out a deal. So, um, all right, yep. perfect, Bubba. I appreciate you coming on. My pleasure. And also to touch on that, just so you know, Ford's mission and vision is one team, one plan, one goal. Love it. All right, bud. Hey, let's talk, I'll talk to you soon. All right, buddy. Have a great one. Let's go.